See over Matoush Gamrot aged nicely. Gamrot's in the main event next week. Goram Kutadeladze wants to resume his rise today. I told you. What? I told you. I told you. I told you. Oh my goodness. I want my teeth to rise. I was trying to Thank you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> right. What a trip this has been for you, huh? Oh, man, it's been an absolute great treat for me, man. I've been loving it. Yeah. Um, so first of all, let's go back to the weigh-ins. He missed weight, um, and you guys sort of got into a back and forth at the ceremonials. How actually annoyed were you by that? I, I was pretty annoyed because uh, he was trying to justify it, saying he could have cut more, uh, but the doctor told him to stop, told him to stop, and I was pretty annoyed by it. Uh, you know, and he was trying to justify it. He's like, hey, bro, look, like, you don't, like, don't say that, don't sit there and say, I would have went back to try. He's like, hey, look, if the doctor said, if the doctor said, said like, you got to stop cutting, you got to stop cutting, because I already knew. Uh, I got, like, a message, like, we got, like, told, like, two hours or three hours before Wayne's that he was going to be two over. So, uh, you know, I guess by the time he got to the doctor, like, the doctor was like, I think whenever he actually weighed in, that's whenever he said, yeah, not no more. So I was like, all right, okay. But don't tell me later that the doctor stopped it when you still had like two or three hours. So I was like a little annoyed, but at the same time, it is what it is. I had to keep my composure. But uh, what really rubbed me wrong is whenever I went to weigh, like whenever I was doing the uh, ceremonial weigh-ins, like I was sitting there, I was like looking at my family. I, I spotted my family in the, in, the, in the crowd, saw my baby and everything. And then all of a sudden out of the back of my head, all, all I hear is, uh, you know, get your ass down here, boy. And I'm like, did this motherfucker? No, yeah, nah, that's, that's, what, that's what literally irritated me. And after that, that's whenever I started walking towards them. I, I felt the way, cause I'm like, I'm having my moment looking at my son and this guy's, this guy tells me that. That's the reason why I got heated at the, in the exchange. But then he started talking, and it got me even more riled up. So I was like, yeah. yeah. It's funny. You kept saying throughout this week that, you know, composure and you needed to fight emotion. It's like he did everything to try and stop you from doing that, right? You said he was talking to you in the cage as well? Yeah, he was talking to me in the cage. He was like, man, you keep bringing up that stuff from Brazil, bro. You're talking all that shit. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, like, it's not... I can't control what like y'all ask me, and if y'all ask me, I'm gonna I'm gonna like say what I feel. I'm not gonna hold back my opinion, and at the same time, it's it's not me putting up the headlines on like and like let's just say like a random MMA website puts up, Adrian wants to knock him out for bigotry. It's like no, if you actually listen to what I said in those interviews, I said a whole bunch of Brazilian fans would love for me to knock him out because of what he said. And I was like, that is a little bit of bigotry. So they, they clickbait this stuff, and uh, he got mad at that. you know. And I'm just like, bro, dude, if you actually le looked at it instead of just reading the clickbait shit, he would have understood what I was saying. Because it was a, like, I actually cut, cut him some slack. But it's still, I still look at him sideways even right now. So there's still like, I, there's still some animosity. I don't like that guy. Yeah, so I, when, when are you headed to Brazil? Because you'll never have to buy another meal there. Man, I'm telling you. you I, I, man, when I go, man, I'm telling you, I'm partying. <laughs> Carnival, dog. Yeah. So uh, with that in mind, so when he tried to apologize to you afterwards, was that just a... Was he trying no, to apologize? No, was it, it, it wasn't even an apology. He was just like you, like, you know I wasn't out, bro. Like, I came here to fight, and I was like, I wasn't out. I was like, bro, you were looking the other way. <laughs> I, and, and I am swinging on you. You are out. I like, I like, bro, you were done. I was like, he's like, nah, I came to fight. And I was like, nah, like, but sh I shook his hand. And I was like, I got nothing else to say to you, bro. We're done. We're done. That's never, uh, I guess Andrea pulled him, to, like, was grabbing him. But, man, I don't know. I just, I just, I think that's one guy in fighting who I just know I just don't like. When you, uh, when you look at your performance now, how do you feel about your actual showing? How do you feel you actually fought? I, I wish I did my, I wish I did everything faster if that makes sense. Because I, I felt like I, I hesitated just a little bit. I could have got it done a lot faster, a lot cleaner. I could have got away from getting cut with the headbutt. You know, uh, there's just, yeah, it was just, I could have got, could have done it a lot cleaner. And I, I'm going to go back, I'm going to rewatch the tape. You know, I could have, th those kicks, I, I left a couple blank kicks. You know, he kicked me and I didn't return anything. I should have been on it immediately. I shouldn't be waiting. I should just be firing on all cylinders every single time I come in. Yeah. You hit him with a body shot, I think, that seemed to start like his fading, right? Did you know as soon as you hit him with that, that, oh, I got you to the body and I'm going to get you again and again? Yeah, I just knew I had to keep my composure during that time because I wanted to go in. I want, like I'm telling you, I wanted to hit him with the hammers. But uh, I just told myself to keep it composed because he's a dangerous guy. And there was one, uh, he hit me with like a check hook. I can't, sh I can't, I can't remember if it was the right or left. Uh, in that fight, but I hit him and he came at me and then uh, 
and then I think right before that, the Clash of Heads came in. I was like, oh. And then uh, after that, you know, I just saw it started, started winding down because he came at me, he charged at me, and I just skated around. And after that, I knew. I looked at him, I was like, there's a difference. I felt the slowing, and he does that in every fight. I already knew. Like, he did it against Randy Costa, he did it against Kai Kamaka, he did it against all these other guys he's fought. He had that slowdown. Whenever he had that slowdown, I just knew I had to pick up the speed and, uh, you know, wear him down when he's, like, starting to tire out. So I was like, all right, that's perfect for me. Pick my shots, put him out. Have you you lost your dad six years ago, and I know what that's I lost mine like a month after you lost yours. And you're on this great journey now. I mean, and what do you think he would think? You, had, you got a standing ovation from your fellow Texans. You stretched a guy, and now you're looking for bigger fish to fry. What do you think your dad would think about that? Oh, my dad would be extremely proud of me right now, especially that he, he'd be, he would be holding my son right now in the stands. You know, that, I think that'd be, that, that would be amazing. You know, like there's a, there's a couple people I, who I wish were here, you know, but they're not, you know, but it, it, makes, it, it makes it even better knowing that they, that they told me I could be in this position. And the, the fact that I'm still here and continuing to, to drive and still continuing to do what they believe I could do, you know, it just, it's just a, a testament to, to what they believed in me, you know. And, I, and at the same time, while they believed in me, they told me I had to believe in myself. And whenever I did that, that's whenever the true success came. And this is where I'm at now. And I'm proud, you know, I am super proud that I think, I believe that they would, they would be super proud as well. What next? Um... Uh, honest, honestly, whoever, whoever, I, I really don't care at this point. You know, I, I've, I fought, I fought guys that called me out, and then there's uh, guys who had called me out, and a lot of us weren't booked at the time. And next thing you know, they all get fights booked, and uh, you know they were calling me out, and I didn't have a fight booked. The only person that answered the call was Tony Kelly, so props to him for that. But other than that, no love for that guy. Adrian, congrats on the win, man. Um, Thank you. Would you say this is the most satisfying win of your career so far? Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. I, I just, again, I, there was just, I don't know, there was just an extra added, like, uh, thing to it whenever I was, uh, whenever I was fighting him. Because in the middle, like, when he started talking a little bit more shit, I was like, oh, now I really don't like you. Like, there's, I can get being in the, that competitive spot and, like, finding yourself to f- find something to, uh, to uh, pump you up and all that stuff. But, oi. No, but uh, yeah, no. He, he started he talk shit, and I felt like I kept everything pretty cordial. And the next thing you know, he starts calling me like a wish, a wish version of Masvidal. And now, you know, I, he kind of wishes he didn't say that, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And in, in media day, you talked a little bit about this kind of being a fight that's going to like test your, you know, your mental focus and not letting yourself, you know, get too emotional inside the fight. So, how did it feel as it was actually playing out, considering he wasn't there talking trash to you and everything like that? You know, I, I just felt like, yeah, just I, in my head, I was like, just keep talking. Just keep talking. I'm finding my openings. Like, you, every time he opened his mouth, like, I saw another opening. And that's whenever I started rocking him. I don't know if y'all noticed. He started talking to me, found the opening, rocked him. He, man, he, he kept opening up his mouth, and I, was, I kept shutting it for him. So, you know, that's, I think that was the perfect way to explain it. And do you think this is the type of victory, like, considering the reaction that we've seen online across social media and everything, that's going to elevate your star power to the next level? Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially fighting here, like in like I, I got blessed to be able to fight on my my home state. So I came in with the advantage and just like being able to like hear the crowd, just see the crowd. Like man, walking out and just like everybody like cheering for me, like that felt so amazing, you know. And then, uh, you know, there's always that one bad apple, and someone said uh, one of those guys said Tony Kelly's gonna knock you off. I flicked that guy off, but I kept going. But uh, uh, yeah, no, my. Uh, that, that was pretty funny to me in my head. Now thinking back about it, but you know I'm in Texas, man. I'm gonna get all the love in the world from them because I, I, I'm a I'm a hard nosed Texas guy, man. I love Texas so much. Texas to me is the greatest state in the world, and uh, man, I, I'm just glad to be here. And lastly, for me, uh, Gilbert Burns asked for your info to send you some money. So uh... oh shit, <laughs> hey hey man, I, I told I told him when he said it at, at the very beginning that this was on the house. Uh, but man, those 50k bonuses, man. I, I don't know if I'm going to get one tonight because everybody's taking them. Uh, so I might have to send them. <laughs> yeah, it could be one of those nights where you need to, you know, get in Dana's ear and say, hey, everybody. Needs hey, yeah, yeah, come on, everybody. <laughs> on that note, Adrian, great victory. Four straight bonuses. Five straight tonight. I mean, he missed weight. Hometown. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Was that, like, short enough to be kind of like a – I don't think it was fight of the night worthy, but a, definitely a stoppage. Uh, performance of the night, you know, if I get one low key slid underneath the, you know, Dan says, hey, here you go. That was a good one. I, I take that too. But uh, yeah, no, I hope I get one. But there was a lot of great, 
lot of great knockouts here today. So I, it, it's going to be a hard one. But, man, just with the animosity and everything, I feel like it deserves one, man. I feel like it deserves one. Nine fight winning streak, six in the UFC if you include the contender series. I do. <laughs> What's it going to take to get a number next to your name? Is this the fight that did it for you? I, man, I feel since uh, Tony Kelly was a little bit way behind me, uh, I don't know if it puts a number next to me, but the way I finished them might. But uh, also at the same time, let's just say I do get ranked like at the spot number 15. It's only going to take a couple weeks before I probably get knocked off because Bantamweight is always coming up with a whole bunch of killers. Uh, so I feel like I'm in, it's, I feel like especially like I'm in the top 20, like at least like from 20 to 14 at least because the Bantamweight's filled with top killers like there everybody's a killer here so it's going to be hard to break into those rankings especially i feel like a lot of those guys aren't taking fights out people who are ranked aren't taking fights outside of the ranking so uh i hope to get a ranking i would hope to get a ranking but i wouldn't mind i wouldn't i wouldn't be upset if it takes me one more fight because i'm here to fight anyways and lastly, we've talked about it before. It wasn't too long ago the Schmo interviewed Sugar Sean O'Malley. He brought up your name as a future opponent. Do you see that collision course happening? And at what point do you see that happening? And I absolutely see that happening. And I see it happening probably by the, uh, honestly, I think by the end of this year. He gets past Pedro Munoz. I just knocked out Tony Kelly. I have another spectacular win. And then let's just say he sits for, for a second, weighs out his options. I'm there. Like, I'll be there. I don't, mind, I don't mind fighting him at all because I just know me knocking out Sugar Sean is going to just bump me way, way up high. So I'm 100% down for that fight. And, uh, you know, whether, whether he wins or loses uh, against Pedro Munoz, it won't, it won't drop his stock whatsoever. So to me, either way, that fight still, is, is still going to bring a lot of eyes in, a lot of dollars in, and I feel like we both need to get paid for that. And it's going to be a really well, like, it's going to be a really fun fight. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to be easy fight, but it's going to be a really fun fight for me, especially when I get to knock him out. Congrats. Thank you. Adrian, back here. Okay. Um, so, uh, where do you, your boxing look really crisp tonight. Where do you think your boxing uh, ranks among, uh, amongst the guys in the bantamweight division? Uh, man, I, I'm, I'm easy. Man, you know what? Fuck it. I'm top one. I'm hey, top one of them. Because you, you have, you know, you have guys like Peter Yan, TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're I, I would say it like this, they're more, they're more kickboxing oriented. Uh, Peter Yan is a little bit more tie oriented. Uh, Dillashaw uses his hands, uses his feet, he uses everything a lot more. I'm more hands based, which I'm starting to use, like, since it's MMA, like, I'm starting to use everything a little bit more, a little bit better, trying to be more kick or, like, add more kicks to my repertoire and start being more comfortable throwing the kicks. But when it comes just to pure hands, man, I, th I think I'm the best in the division, man. I, I, like, Peter Yan sets up everything else off of his kicks. You know, he does a really good job of, like, oh, you start trying to get into a boxing exchange with them, you slip a little bit, you're getting a left head kick to the head, you know. So he has really good sharp kicks. Uh, he does a really good high guard, but honestly, you see that, you see that a lot. And, you know, if, if you put me up against Peter Yan just strictly boxing, I think I, I, think I beat him up. Do you still feel like you have a lot to improve on, although, you know, you're undefeated? There's, a, there's, always, there's always a lot to improve on, man. I'm never going to feel comfortable. I'm always going to feel like I'm behind. And uh, even in boxing, man, there's always going to be there's al there's always going to be those fighters that are better than you. And you got to go out there and uh, prove it every single time that you're that you're better. And you got to go out there and get better. That's why I got some great coaches behind me, you know, so uh, keep me keep me on track. Make sure I got great training partners, great coaches right behind me to make sure that I'm on track not cutting any slack and continuing to go. Uh, but I'll, I'll never feel comfortable. I will never feel comfortable. I'm never gonna begin to, I'm never gonna put myself in a place where I feel comfortable that I'm good, that I, like I'm good enough here. I'm gonna continue to get better everywhere. And what are some tips or pointers that you can remember from uh, Coach Saul Solis? Man, cool, calm, and collected. Like him and my, him, both him and my dad always told me that like, man, no. Don't fight with the emotions, because when you fight with the emotions, you start losing. You start losing it. And honestly, Tony Kelly is that perfect example. He started losing his emotions right in the middle of that fight. It started like he wanted to hurt me, and like he like was talking mess to me. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm just gonna find out. And I just stayed cool, calm, and collected. I didn't let the moment overtake me and everything. And I felt super comfortable. And I feel like that was one of the biggest things too. And also, whenever I hurt a guy, I I, I find the kill. You know, find the kill. Can we get a? Can we get a? Oh, absolutely! All day, every day, Houston. Thanks. 
Then the, for the Longhorns, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Congrats on the finish. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Adrian, back here. All right. You've spent months campaigning on social media. Can you just put into words what that performance meant to you to get that in front of your family, most notably your newborn son and your friends in Texas? It, man, I'm telling you, like, just getting this fight in Austin, Texas, to me, was like a blessing. It, 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 fuck, man, I haven't fought, I haven't fought at home since 2019 in my home state, you know, since 2019. I haven't fought in front of my family since 2019. And the fact that I'm here... Uh, the fact that I'm here and fighting in front of them again, like, it just means the world to me, man, because now it's a plus one. You know, it's a plus one. My little, son's, my little son had the headphones, like, the, the, the earmuffs, so, it was like, the sound wouldn't be too bad. Uh, man, I'm kind of hoping he didn't cry whenever the crowd went nuts for me, so I'm like, you know, I got I to gotta check back with, with, uh, with Mama. I got to see, see how he took it, you know, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm super excited. I can't wait to go see them. And last one for me, how was it training with Rafian Stotts and Corey Sandhagen? Oh, man, I'm telling you, I, I really didn't get to train with uh, Corey Sandhagen. I wrestled with him, like, uh, a little bit, but that was it. Uh, but Rafian Stotts in the camp, man, I'm telling you, like, they're, like, that guy is the epitome of hard work. That guy won the title on Saturday, Wednesday. That Wednesday, he was already back in the gym. He was helping me for my camp. He was him and my training partner Cameron were my main training partners for uh, for this fight coming up, and then like getting great coaches like uh, Coach Corley and Coach Eve Edwards, I mean, like that just made everything like rounded out and well better, man. But just seeing someone like uh, Roth come in and man, he did two a days with me. He didn't have to. He doesn't have a fight coming up. He doesn't have a fight anytime soon. Like maybe September, October, but man, he was doing two a days with me, helping me push. Yeah, I could have been by myself, like, during strain conditions, but he was there with me. You know, he's in shape, so he's pushing me as well. So that, that, like, that was a really big blessing to have someone like Rafael Stotts, and I give him the utmost praise. I love that guy, man. I'll do anything for that guy.